Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be doing a favorites video for watercolor, and these are going to be my favorite watercolors from uh, the beginning of 2022. And uh, these are just gonna be colors. I'm not gonna have brushes or anything because my brushes haven't really changed all that much lately. But, um, and these don't necessarily represent the brands that you will see today. There are no Schmincke colors here. And there's no Zeki colors either, although there are some Zeki colors in this palette. But uh, I'm going to put these palettes off to the side and I have a Pentallic field book here to do some swatches. This page is on the opposite side of another page that I did for uh, these ocean paper watercolors, which you will see some of today. Uh, so I, uh, some of, there's some little spots here, but I don't think that will diminish <laughs> using this page. So let me go ahead and open this up. So this is going to have the first colors that I really, really liked at the beginning of this year. You can see I've already used a ton of these. So the, the brand, oh, and I should say that Masha's watercolor, which you'll see some actual watercolors represented today as well. Uh, these, their little wooden palettes are so cute and practical. Um, this one is a little travel palette here um, with a little mixing area. And I believe that this is, yeah, I think it's porcelain here on the top. So really nice and uh, portable. It holds, was this 12, two, four, six, eight, 10. Yeah, so it holds 12. And here are all the colors that are in this little palette here, but I'm only gonna focus on some of these colors. And uh, a new brand that I haven't really focused on on the channel before, and that is Isaro. So I think I do have, yeah, I do have a couple of the green tubes here. So these are Isaro watercolors. I believe they're made in Belgium. And uh, they are really, really high quality and beautiful colors. And they kind of have some interesting combinations, which I hadn't really seen in other types of watercolor. So I have some water off here to the side and I am going to put some water in the colors I'm going to swatch out for you. And I may do a little bit of color mixing with these as well because um, I found that these greens, especially this is chartreuse green, mixes really well um, in place of a yellow. It's a, it goes a little bit green, but it's mostly a yellow. I actually think that it is a yellow pigment. Yes, so it is PY129. That's the only tube I think, I have a couple of other tubes with the, the pigment info, but I'm, I'm just gonna put a link to the Isaro watercolors so that you can take a look. All right. So let's get in here with this first one, which is chartreuse green. And chartreuse is kind of a new color to me as far as me really liking the color. I, I generally have not really um, played around with it too much, but uh, I do love green golds. And this is very much like a green gold, yet it is single pigment, which is really awesome. Uh, if you were to just get one, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the individual swatches a little better. If you were just to get one Isaro watercolor, I w at this point, I haven't tried very many, but the chartreuse green is really beautiful. That page is curved a little bit, so it's the pigment is rolling off there. This next color is similar. It's, uh, it's called Mindy Green. But this color has uh, a couple of different pigments in it, and then it also has a little bit of mica in it, which gives it a little bit of sparkle. It's kind of hard to see the sparkle. It doesn't come off super strong, but it's a really beautiful color, and I like the subtle sparkle that you get from that. And then the next color by Isaro is Powdery Pink. And Mindy Green and Powdery Pink are two new colors to this brand. Actually, I'm gonna move that over so you can see a little better. And this one's fairly opaque, but it's such a beautiful blush tone. 
I really, really like this color. I'm gonna add a little more water there. You can see that's where I touched the paper, so it's kind of repelling the color. Such a beautiful color, and I really love the three of these together. Uh, this one's a little more yellowish. Let's see, I, I do have that one over here, so let me give you what's in it. So it has, uh, it says plus pearlescent, PY110 and PG7 in this one. So it has a green and a yellow, uh, which is kind of funny because it looks yellower than the uh, chartreuse, which is just a yellow pigment. <laughs> really, really beautiful. And then this color, this next color is called Imperial Moon. I don't have the tube, so I can't tell you the uh, pigments, but it is really, really pretty. And this is also a color that has sparkle in it. It's sort of like a an Indian red with with uh, mica added. And it's also granulating. So it really gives off a beautiful, when it, once it's dried, it's super beautiful and kind of interesting looking. So I'll get these a little bit closer. That's that chartreuse. That's that Mindy green. Then we have powdery pink which I have the powdery pink over here as well. What does that have in it? That has PW6 colon one, which is a white, and then PR122. Really, really pretty. And then this one down here, which you can see is already granulating. And you can see, can, I don't know if you can see any of that sparkle, but there definitely is plenty of it in there. A little bit more than the Mindy green. Although as it dries, you can probably see a little bit more of that here in the corner. All right, so Isero. I love the brand. I had never really used the brand, uh, but I have. it has become a favorite, and these colors are just beautiful. I really tried to focus on colors that I didn't have in other brands, so that's why I have these, because these I thought were, were fairly unique. So I am not going to swatch all of these, but one other brand that I've really been drawn to is uh, the Kramer watercolors. Uh, this is the first time I've ever tried the Kramer watercolors, and I actually put them together in a set with my Zeki watercolors, and they actually work really well together. Um, I had been kind of on the fence about the Zeki watercolors when I first got them, um, mostly because I was expecting some different pigments than just, just sort of standard pigments. I thought there were too many standard pigments in that set. But they are lovely, um, and they work really well with these. Um, obviously, oh, and this, even though it's label, labeled ultramarine blue, is actually ultramarine green. I mislabeled that. I need to correct that. Uh, and then I do have one lone Wallace and Seymour indigo in here. But my favorites from here from these new Kramer watercolors are this Pelogian Maroon, which is just really super beautiful and deep. And these Kramer pigments are so pigmented. Their watercolors are so pigmented and um, just have such a beautiful quality to them. Okay, so that one, and I would have to say of all these blues or bluish greens, the ultramarine green is probably my favorite. It's just so beautiful. I'm leaving a little room so I can label these here. They're just really beautiful. All right, so those are the ones I wanted to focus on. Oh, oh, and I, I should also include <laughs> the Ergazine, Ergazine Yellow, which, you know, clearly I'm leaning towards this kind of color. Um, as you can see here, this is sort of a variation on a yellow-green, um, but that one is also really beautiful. Those have been my favorites there. 
So the other colors that I'm going to show you are um, hand all handmade colors. So this is a combination of case for making wild thorn and ocean paper watercolors. But uh, the ocean paper ones are the ones I'm going to focus on today. I really, really love pretty much all of these colors. Um, the, uh, the, the paint is really unique in that it is, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like gouache because it has a very opaque look to it. So it, they don't mix that greatly. <laughs> um, if you're looking for a good mixing paint, this is not really the one for you. Uh, but it's it's a really, really lovely paint and sort of um, unique, I would say. So I would say the colors in here that I have really been drawn to, one is this stone ochre color. which is a really nice neutral. Really nice neutral there. And this darker blue. So this is Paris blue. And this is a little more transparent than some of the other colors, but it's really, really a vibrant blue. So these are sort of almost on opposite ends of the spectrum here. You've got a really bright, transparent color, and then you have um, sort of a milky neutral there. So those are my favorites in the palette. Although I would say that golden olive is also one of my favorites here. I have a new set from them, but I haven't really had enough chance to play with it. <laughs> oh, and again, I'm going with that yellowish green, aren't I? And that color is very similar to this Kramer Ergazine yellow. These are nowhere near as pigmented as the Kramer colors. Okay. And so I have one last palette that I'm going to open. I'm going to stack these up since they're still wet. And this palette has a couple of new, or new to me, handmade watercolor brands that I have just been absolutely loving. One is Deep Deep Light. And I will put a link down below to the swatching videos that I've done of their watercolors. An amazing amazing watercolor company uh, and the other is Masha's watercolor which is the same brand that makes these little palettes they're available on Etsy and they just have such amazing colors um, I haven't used the Masha's as often as I have the deep deep light watercolors but there's just so many good colors in here so with the deep deep light I would say that I'm gonna move these up a little so we can get a couple more down here. With the Deep Deep Light, my favorites have been J Blue, which is what this is. Oh, and I'm getting a lot of resistance here on the paper. It's J Blue. Oops, looks like I've gotten some, some drops of that. And this is just beautiful, deep blue. Um, it's very granulating. I will put it up closer to the camera so you can see it a little better. I'm actually going to um, dab off those little spots there. Okay. So the J Blue and then the other one I have really, really liked is Rose Ashes. But there's so there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. <laughs> I uh, I would recommend pretty much all of their colors, at least the ones that I have tried. Okay. So this is that rose ashes color, and my favorites from them are obviously the granulating ones. You can see this one 
gonna tilt that a little bit so you can see it out of the glare. Uh, this one is already getting a lot of really nice granulation. This one will get some granulation as well. And then I'm gonna swatch some of my favorites with the Masha's watercolor. So one of my favorites is this cobalt green hue. which as it first comes down, it doesn't look all that interesting, but once it dries, it really has a beautiful color separation between the blue and the green aspects of this color. And I found that they really come out better when you water the, um, the watercolor down a bit. So that is the cobalt green. And then another one I really, really liked is this shadow purple. And super lovely um, and they go down really really nicely they have such a nice pigment load like they have tons of pigment which I really love and again with this one it's a little bit easier to see sort of the variation in the colors by adding more water so I'm going to try and get that to come out a little bit and you can already see that there's some really pretty color separation happening here so that's it for my favorite watercolors for the beginning of 2022. Um, basically a lot of handmade colors and a new brand, uh, Isaro, that I've discovered that are just really, really fun. Um, these colors don't really follow too much of a uh, pattern <laughs> other than I have really been liking the purples and the pinks a little bit more. Let me actually zoom out just a little bit so you can see that whole page. Um, and obviously the yellow greens um, and blue is always a favorite. So um, no, no real reds in here though. So I haven't really been focusing on deep reds. I guess those really aren't in my wheelhouse yet this year. So these have almost completely dried. They're dry on this side for sure. Um, really, really pretty. And now you can see that nice granulation in that, uh, what's the color, Imperial Moon. And I don't know if you can see, but down here, yeah, you can see a little bit down here on the bottom, there's some of that gold sparkle coming out and it's just really pretty. This also I think is gold in here in this Mindy Green, but you can't see it as well because of the contrast, but I really like that it has those little accents of sparkle. Oh, and this color is clearly very wet still. Um, and then we have the Kramer colors. Not as complex as some of these others, but they have so much pigment and the color tone is really, really beautiful. I think if I had added more water to this particular one, you could get more granulation. I definitely went for more water with the ones down below here. And, um, and then this beautiful uh, Ergazine yellow here. And then the Ocean Paper colors, uh, this one is a really beautiful opaque neutral. This one is that really lovely, uh, what was the name of that color? I think it's Paris Blue. Did I say Paris Blue? Yes, Paris Blue. Um, and that even has a little bit of granulation. One thing that I've noticed with these is they can get a little streaky. Um, so that's just something to be aware of with those. And I think it's probably because of their somewhat opaque nature. And they definitely have a little bit of a powdery feel when they're dry. And then that is that uh, golden olive, which I think I would normally build up more than that. So that's kind of light. And then I really, really love these uh, deep, deep light watercolors. That's that J blue, which now you can already see some really serious granulation happening. Even where it's still wet, it has that beautiful blue shade. Um, this is that rose ashes color, which also has a really nice granulating quality to it. And then these are the Masha's watercolor, which uh, this is that cobalt green hue, which now you can really see the color separation between the blue, uh, well, bluish green and the more yellowish green in there. And then this is that shadow purple which you can really see that color separation there too in granulation. So still on the gran granulation train this year, I would say, you know, these, these are my, have been my favorite colors this year, but 
my favorites of my favorites are probably the Isaro and then the Deep Deep Light and the Masha's watercolors. These have been really cool to discover, but they're not as cool as, as these around the edges. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of uh, new videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.